The quad stick adaptive controller can be used alongside of adaptive switches so that somebody can use the adaptive switches to access control in addition to using the quad stick controller, sip and puff, and joystick. These can be programmed to be used with the quad stick through the quad stick manager program, which we'll show next. The switches can be plugged in to the adaptive switch ports above and below the input for the lip adapter on the quad stick. If you got a quad stick that has all inputs in both the lower region and the upper region, they can be plugged in in each location. Some quad sticks have an output port with a lower location and cannot accept switches. If it says in, in the lower and upper region of your quad stick, you can use adaptive switches for both of these ports. If you want to use an adaptive switch with one of these ports, you can plug in your adaptive switch directly into the port. If you want to use multiple switches with a single port, you can buy a adapter which splits the different ports for the switches so that two switches can be accepted. Therefore, by using the splitter for both locations on the quad stick, the quad stick can be used with four different adaptive switches using the input ports on the back of the quad stick. Then the switches can be plugged in each to the ports on the adapter. Next we're going to show how to program the adaptive switches through the quad stick manager program both while using the adapter or plugging it, plugging it directly into the input ports on the back of the quad stick. Before the adaptive switches can be used alongside the quad stick in games, they will need to be assigned controls within the quad stick spreadsheets. In the quad stick spreadsheets, the adaptive switches will show up as digital inputs. So you'll type in digital in, and for the top port on the quad stick, that will be assigned digital input 8 if you're not using one of the splitters. The bottom hole on the quad stick will be assigned digital input 1 if not using one of the splitters. If you're using one of the splitters, there will be a black and a red port that you can plug switches into. For the black port, it will be assigned the lower of the two numbers. So, if you're plugging in a splitter to the top port on the quad stick, those will be assigned digital input 7 and 8. Therefore, the black port on the splitter will be assigned as digital input 7, because that's the lower of the two numbers, and the red port on the adapter will be assigned as digital input 8. Similarly, the bottom port will either be assigned digital input 1 or digital input 2. If using the splitter, the black part of the adapter will be assigned the lower number, which will be digital input 1, and the red port on the splitter will be assigned digital input 2. Then, after you have programmed the adaptive switches to be assigned specific controls in the game, they can be used alongside the quad stick to play games. Adaptive joysticks can be used alongside the quad stick, so somebody can use the quad stick in addition to using an adaptive joystick to play video games. The joysticks can be plugged into the quad stick and be programmed to work with the quad stick through the quad stick manager program. The joysticks can be plugged in to the USB-A port on the back of the quad stick like so. Then the joystick can be programmed for different functions in the quad stick manager program. We'll show how to program the joysticks later in the video. There are a lot of different joysticks that are compatible with the quad stick and that can be programmed through the quad stick manager program. The ultra stick from the quad stick site is compatible as well as many of the USB joysticks from the company Warfighter Engaged. Go on the quad stick site and under the user manual they will list all of the compatible joysticks that can plug into the USB A port on the back of the quad stick and be used for different inputs in games. Before any, any device can be used with the USB-A port on the quad stick, you need to go in the miscellaneous tab in the quad stick manager program and enable USB-A host mode, which enables devices to be plugged into the USB-A port on the quad stick. So make sure there's a check mark next to this. If not, click the check mark and then click save preferences to quad stick 
to save enable USB host mode turned on onto your quad stick. Once you're ensured this is enabled, then go to the firmware tab and make sure that your quad stick is uploaded to the latest firmware. This will ensure that all of the latest USB devices can be compatible with the quad stick. So if your quad stick is not updated to the newest build, click on the newest build and then click De download selected firmware to quad stick to update your quad stick. Then you can start using USB A devices with your quad stick. If using a joystick by plugging it into the USB A port on the back of the quad stick, you will first need to assign it controls in the game within the quad stick spreadsheets. Within the quad stick spreadsheets, joystick movements on anything plugged into the USB A port will show up as USB devices. So you can go into the quad stick spreadsheet and type in USB and USB 1 left, USB 1 right, USB 1 up, and USB 1 down will be primarily corresponding to any joystick that is plugged in to the USB A port in the back of the quad stick controller. Therefore, for movements, let's say we want to program the left joystick to be controlled by a joystick that is plugged into the back of the quad stick, I can assign USB 1 left, which would be left on that joystick, as left joy left or left on the left joystick in the game and assign the rest of the USB directional controls to the left joystick in the game. Now I have my joystick which is plugged into the back of the quad stick assigned controls in the game to be accessible and be able to access the left joystick while I'm playing. Many different controllers can be plugged in to the USB A port on the back of the quad stick and be used alongside the quad stick to play specific games. So for someone who's able to partially access a controller and wants to use a standard controller or some other version of a controller alongside of the quad stick, this can be plugged in to the back of the quad stick and then using the quad stick manager program the controls can be programmed on the controller using the specific spreadsheets in the Quad Stick Manager program. Later in this video, I will show how to program the joysticks and buttons on a standard controller that is plugged into the back of the Quad Stick to work with the Quad Stick when using this method for playing video games. Controllers that are plugged into the back of the Quad Stick are much more difficult to program compared to any other device that you can plug into the Quad Stick. That is because there's a lot of different buttons and joysticks that are on a controller that need to be programmed for different outputs in the game. You can use the USB host DualShock 4 tester profile available through QuadStick to see which buttons and joysticks are assigned different buttons in the Google Sheets. So, for example, you can see in the Google Sheets that USB 1 button 5 is assigned the square button on the controller. Therefore, anything that I assign on my sheet as USB 1 button 5 will be the square button on the controller. So, if I wanted USB 1 button 5 to be assigned the X button, that would make it so the square button on the controller would control the X button in the game because USB 1 button 5 corresponds to the square button on the controller. Similarly, if I wanted the triangle button to control the left bumper or left 1 on the, joyce, on the uh, controller, I would look at this reference sheet and see that USB 1 button 8 corresponds to the triangle button on the, on the controller. Therefore, I would go to left 1 on my sheet and I would program USB 1 button 8 to control the left bumper or left 1 in the game to make my triangle button control the left bumper. Similarly, if I wanted to keep the control exactly the same, so if I wanted the circle button on my controller to control the circle button in the game, I would simply just look at the reference sheet and see that USB 1 button 7 corresponds to the circle button on the controller. And I would just go to my spreadsheet 
and just type in USB 1, button 7. So that now, the circle button remains the circle button in the game. I would do this for all of the different inputs that I would want on the controller programmed as different outputs in the game. And I can do this both for joysticks and the buttons on the controller. And I can assign them anything I want, and I can assign them also to activate differently using the output functions. This is very tedious and it is a lot of work, but it allows you to remap a controller and use it alongside of the quad stick to play games. Many different controllers can be made to be compatible with the quad stick plugged into the USB A port using the method we sh were showing previously in this video. This includes the Horiflex Mini Controller, the PS4 version of the Evil Controllers, many specialty PS4 controllers, and the Xbox Adaptive Controller when using the Brook XE Converter. The Brook XE Converter can be plugged in to the Xbox and then plugged in to the quad stick. And this will allow the quad stick to be used with the Xbox Adaptive Controller. And then the Xbox Adaptive Controller can be programmed through the Quad Stick Manager program to be compatible with specific controls. The XE Converter can also allow the standard Xbox controllers and Nintendo Switch controllers to be compatible with the Quad Stick as well. 